The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. We'll start the presentation in just a minute. Just before I do start the presentation, if everybody could uh, digitally raise their hand so I can make sure that they can hear me. Okay, terrific. Thanks, everyone. All right, well, welcome to uh, the Avail presentation. We are looking at uh, better ways to manage con digital content. And Avail is a tool that provides us uh, an excellent way and, and new ways of actually managing our digital content. Uh, Avail is completely file agnostic. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter what file type that we, that we bring into it. Uh, it is also completely uh, non-disruptive to the to your existing file structure, <clears throat> and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So there's five key parts that we'll have a look at for Avail. First of all, uh, what we can see here on our screen is the Avail desktop. There is also a, an Avail browser, which is a plugin or add-in to Revit, and that provides very deep integration with Revit. Having said that, just want to reiterate that Avail, the, the desktop app, is completely file agnostic. Okay, so it, it'll manage any file type that you care to throw at it. Uh, the third part that uh, we'll talk briefly about is a small cloud component. Then there is a tool called Stream, which is available for the enterprise users. And there's also a uh, analytics that are uh, available primarily for the team and enterprise users. <clears throat> so just to kick off, uh, if you do want more information uh, about uh, you know, some of the, uh, the Avail website, etc. Uh, the Avail website is just www.getavail.com, uh, so you can go there to to download the product. Basically, you'll need to register before you can download the product. But keep in mind, if you're a Revit user, you'll want to download both the Avail desktop as well as the Avail Revit browser. Once you've installed Avail, uh, there will come automatically with the Welcome to Avail channel. And essentially, this is your getting started guide. So you can go through and watch a number of videos, etc., that they've uh, produced and placed in the in Avail here. And there are the tagging system, etc., that we see down the bottom there to help us manage what we are viewing. So from a content management perspective, and I will look at the, the Revit channel here. So basically what I've done is I've indexed uh, the out of the box Australian 2018 library into, into Avail. And in here you see, you get a very nice visual display, depending on what the thumbnails of your, your files are, you get a very nice visual display of the content within your library. Basically, what we, uh, you know, one of the things I guess that that we're doing with Avail is to make, you know, provide a a nice graphical tool to people that are used to working with, a, you know, visual, a nice visual tool for uh, people that are used to visual concepts. What the the uh, way it's structured is we have channels and with the channels you can actually share ch 
channels to different people. You can also um, set their permissions uh, to be either uh, an editor of the channel or essentially a, a read only of the channel. So the channels can also you know, be, we can see a list of all channels, you know, recent channels, and uh, we can pin our favorite channels to the left-hand side here, which that uh, left-hand side can also be collapsed. Now the bottom here is, is the method that's been developed to help uh, structure your content and add context to your content. So rather than focusing on location, and, and that's what we've been doing for the last 40 years with the Windows, uh, Windows File Manager, and pretty much any other file manager for that matter, is we focus on location, but with the introduction, you know, with, with the internet and stuff like that, we're a lot more used to focusing on context rather than on location. So we go and do search for things. So, you know, we can do a quick search up in the top here, a text search. I've just done a search for door and you can see I, I get to see everything in this channel that uh, has either door in the file name or has been tagged down here with a, with a tag door. The key functionality uh, for the tagging process has uh, been developed and it's what we refer to as key value pairs. Now this concept's perhaps a, a little bit uh, new and the idea of the concept is basically a tag on its own uh, holds a certain bit of information but when we pair that tag with, with a key perhaps in this case, then it can add a whole different uh, context to, to what we're looking for. And an example of that would be, if I was to tag something uh, as blue, you would have a preconceived idea about what that tag actually meant. And if I was to pair that tag with a key called color, then that probably fits your preconceived idea. However, if I was to pair the tag blue with a key emotion, I'm feeling blue today, it has a completely different context. So with the key value pairs, we're allowed to build uh, a much better context. So you can see here, when I click on a tag, it, it drops off. So not only do I have a a pairing of values in the ver uh, sorry in the horizontal sense, but we also get a pairing of the values in the vertical sense as well. In that it's dropping off all the tags that do not relate to the content uh, that is currently being displayed once we've filtered by the the tag interiors here. So tags are really easy to you know add to the um, <clears throat> to add to content, I can right click and add remove tags. So we can add additional tags in that way. Uh, you know, you can shift and right click and add uh, tags to multiple pieces of content. So really finding and accessing your content becomes a lot more efficient and we no longer are concerned about the location of that content. If I come into the uh, tags and filters icon over here on the left hand side, basically this is where we get in to access uh, all, the, all the different uh, keys. We can create new, new keys. Uh, we can rearrange keys. So I've got this Omni class title here, for example. If I did want to bring that up, I could bring that up and then my active keys, maybe I might just want to increase that to seven so that I get to see the Omni class title. Uh, you can see there's other, other uh, options in here that we, can, we could choose to display as well. So I want to come back to my channel for consuming that data now or consuming that content. If I scroll down, you can see we've now got that, that Omni class title in there. We can, you know, manoeuvre uh, 
turn on the option to wrap those tags or not wrap those tags, depending on what we, we may want to do. So the process, the the combination of I, I guess tags and channels allows us to have uh, some interesting new workflows as well. So as a user was consuming content from this particular channel, uh, and as I say, it's uh, Revit is uh, sorry, Avail is completely file agnostic, so it could be any any sort of content. Uh, at the moment, I'm looking at Revit content. So let's just say I come into my architecture here <clears throat> and then I'll go and filter out for doors and let's just say we find there's an issue with this bifold door panel here. So what I can do, uh, a couple of ways I can access it is uh, one is to click on the little ellipsis buttons down the bottom right of the icon and we can uh, the user may then choose to flag that piece of content. Uh, and what that does is it requires the user to go ahead and put in some comments uh, and hopefully they be a little bit more specific than this. But they can put a description of the issue that they have found in that piece of content. Then from a BIM manager's perspective, what you can do is you can click on the little flag icon down here and you can then go to and see which um, which pieces of content have been flagged. Now, depending on what that uh, content, uh, how bad that content is, you know, if it's how bad the issue for that content is, you may choose to take that uh, piece of content out of um, circulation for the the general users in the office to consume. So what you can do from there is we can choose to add to channel here. You can see I've got this repair channel over there. So if I click on the repair channel and choose to move it to that repair channel, what I've done is I've moved the content out of the channel, but I haven't actually changed where it lives in my filing system. So if I go to the repair channel and right click on the piece of content here, you'll notice I can go to open location and it pops up my windows, if I take it off the other screen, pops up my Windows Explorer and takes me directly to that piece of content. You'll notice that piece of content is in this case living in the default install location for Revit 2018 libraries. <clears throat> okay. So what that means is I can edit this piece of content, make whatever changes I need to this piece of content and I don't have to manage multiple locations uh, of this content, I don't have to manage a cloud version or a uh, and a local version of of the content. So directly from here, you know, I could choose to uh, if I double click on it. Actually, should open it up in Revit. So you can see there, it's gone and opened up in Revit. I could go and go and make edits to the uh, piece of content as needed. Once that content has been updated, you know, from a BIM manager's perspective, you could then come along, choose to close or, or take the flag off that. And in doing so, you may also uh, want to add some comments as to why you've removed the flag. Uh, if you wanted to, it could even be, you know, uh, revision numbers or whatever of that piece of content as well. Then we can right click and obviously move that back to the production channel. <clears throat> so what that also allows us to do is to have multiple channels. So we could have uh, project channels down the left hand side here where we've shared those particular project channels with with uh, members of the project team and we could then grab you know whatever piece of content it is and choose to add that content 
to you know the project channel for example uh, and in this case instead of moving it you might just create a copy of it so in doing so that would not create a copy of the actual file on your uh, on your server or wherever it's being stored it would actually just create a copy of it within a veil and a veil is always pointing to the local location so the cloud component I'll talk a little bit about the cloud component right now the cloud component simply stores basically all the metadata about the about the object so if I expand uh, this information out let me click on that one there <clears throat> so you can see you know it shows the the channels that it's uh, that it that that piece of content appears in. It shows the uh, tags, etc., that relate to that piece of content uh, and the locations that it's being indexed from or, or other, in fact, other locations where it's been found if you've indexed from different locations uh, and it's exactly the same file, then Avail is uh, clever enough to pick up on that. So, you know, basically from a materials uh, perspective as well so you're talking about different file formats you know uh, I've indexed in the uh, Autodesk materials library so you can see here we have just image files uh, it has a built-in uh, viewer for image files as well so if I click on that uh, you, basically you know I can cycle through these these image files <clears throat> we've got additional uh, information about those obviously down here as well but you know what I may want to do is you know grab all of these uh, pieces of uh, all these bits of content here and add a tag and let's call them um, exposed aggregate I've spelt that right <clears throat> So what I would see now is if I went and did a search for or even just for exposed, for example, uh, I would be able to see the, the icon. I've also got a bunch of other uh, images in here that have been either got exposed in the name or have exposed as being tags for that as well. <clears throat> So I've also done some other uh, you know, file types in here that of a project that I was working on uh, relating to a updated Knauf add-in, for example. So you know, once again, MP4 files, just double clicking on it, opens it up in whatever uh, tool the uh, uh, whatever tool your computer uses to open MP4 files, MP3 files. You know, same thing, just uses whatever the de default tool is. <clears throat> so you can tag all that sort of stuff, uh, you know, and help you organise any any file type that you like. So if we have a look now at the integration with with Revit, uh, I'm going to be a little bit pixel constrained here with my screen size, but uh, nevertheless. So I'll just get rid of the uh, the left hand panel there to give me a little bit more screen size I'll get rid of that stuff as well and you know I can reduce the icon size go to a list view whatever makes it easier for me so within here if I was to go to say Windows <clears throat> do a search for Windows and I grab this sliding window here uh, in fact I'll, I'll need to come back to that uh, just before I show that, I need to show you how to actually open the add-in for Revit, which is just on the add-ins tab, and you can see we've got the Avail browser there. So if I go and click on this window, <clears throat> you can see it is showing me a list of uh, windows from the type catalogue, and I can simply grab whatever window that is from the type catalogue there, drag and drop it, and Go and place it in my project. Uh, interestingly, the the uh, 
Avail browser for Revit. Also gives us access to uh, um, nested families within within a family, and we can sort of see the parameter information there as well. There are icons down the bottom here of the uh, Avail uh, browser, and you know we can open that the type catalog, <coughs> which just opens the default uh, type catalog. Ed, uh, in tool for inserting families. Uh, we can open it as a fan, you know, to edit it directly here. Uh, we can load the entire family file, or you know, we can select multiple and choose to load the selected family types in. You can see the tick indicates which ones have been actually loaded in. <clears throat> so some additional uh, features about this that I actually find really quite interesting is if I just go and do a search for doors now and hopefully I'll find the right door, I can remember which one it was. I think it might be, we'll go for this one here. All right, so in here is a list of types within that family. So as you know, normally when you load a family with multiple types in it, all of those types come into the Revit project. But here, if I just grab this type and drag and drop that type and place that in my project, if I now come and have a look at my project browser, and what was that single panel for? You can see it's only loaded in the type that I dragged and dropped from the from the Avail browser. Now, if I had have clicked on the load family file here, obviously it would have taken all of those types into my project if that's what I wanted. But uh, in some cases, you know, it is nice just to be able to bring across the individual types that you want, uh, whether it's a type catalog or not. So there's some great functionality there around that. I have in my uh, browser here, I actually have some uh, another channel here for some uh, wallboards, etc. Uh, you notice, you know, I've got PDF files managed in here as well. Uh, in this case, this is actually a Revit project file. So if I was to click on that Revit project file, uh, it does require, it's obviously in 2017, so it requires an upgrade. That upgrade is just done in the cache side of, it. it's cache that's not actually done to the to the actual file uh, and saved to the actual file. So what this has enabled me to do is, is in fact get access to system families, in this case it's a particular wall type. So I can click on that and uh, just simply drag and drop this system family into, into my project and start drawing with that particular wall type. So a really, really nice way to structure your system families. Uh, we've also got views in here, so you know I've got a couple of views, and I can right-click and insert that view into my project. Don't worry about saving it. <clears throat> and you can see there's the the drafting view that's come into my project. Now, if I had that drafting view laid out on uh, sheets. I could also, I would also see a sheets tab here, and I could actually bring that entire sheet with all its drafting views straight into my Revit project. So, you know, once again, a really nice way of not only managing system families, but also managing uh, standard details, etc. Uh, since I'm an editor of this channel and an administrator, I've got this uh, little icon here to go show all items. Uh, show all items. So in my families here, uh, basically you do get from a project file, you do get access to all the different categories just as you would over here in the uh, Revit project browser. Uh, you get access to all the different families in there. So, you know, uh, let's have a look for, you know, piping systems here. You can see there's uh, a bunch of different piping systems. Um, <clears throat> what have we got 
fluids, curtain wall mullions, you know, so you can access your curtain wall mullions. So if you've got all your different projects uh, in here, I can actually, um, or if you're just working on projects, I can flick, flick over to this project mode. And this project mode is now dealing with just my particular project that, that I've got open right here. And it's giving me access to my families, my views, my sheets, schedules, all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to run it at the moment because it does take a, uh, a few minutes that I don't want to take up for the, uh, for the demonstration. But there is this thumbnail generator. So if I was to run this thumbnail generator, uh, it would go and actually create nice images uh, of all of these views for me. And I would get a really nice graphical view of the, the different views there. And, you know, if I flip out of that project mode now and I come back to the views, that's that's in fact what I've done here to generate these particular views here. So it gives us really a, a, a lovely graphical uh, feedback for, for all the content that we're working with. In addition to that, whether I'm in views or families, you know, I can, can search through here as well. Um, so obviously I don't have any doors in there at the moment. <clears throat> So, in addition to that, you know, we do have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice. We do have different uh, Revit details here. <clears throat> we've got, uh, in fact, if I come down here, we've got AutoCAD as well. So, you know, all of our AutoCAD, uh, if, we're, if we're, in fact, using AutoCAD, we can help it manage our, our AutoCAD libraries as well, block libraries. Uh, so, the, so I've talked about now the Avail desktop app. We've talked about a little bit about the cloud. So uh, I'll just reiterate that the cloud, all that's stored in the cloud is, is just, the, uh, just this tag information, just the metadata. Okay, the files are not at all moved into the cloud at all. They stay on your local system. Uh, <clears throat> so the next part that I that I want to talk about is Stream, which is available to enterprise users. And what Stream does is basically it sets up a watch on a particular uh, uh, folder, and it will automatically index content that uh, comes into that folder and automatically index that into an avail channel for you based on a predefined set of rules. So one of those rules, for example, may be that uh, any of the Revit backup files, you know, the .0001.rvt or RFA or whatever it is, don't bring anything that has uh, that has that in the file name into uh, into the channel because we don't necessarily want to see our backup files there. So uh, I guess I should probably just very quickly show you how the process of indexing. Uh, and it is, it is very easy. I'll just grab you know, any file here. It just happens to be an RFA file, but drag and drop that into avail. And we just go through the process. Now I've only brought in the RFA file, but if there was multiple files, types, it would list all those file types and I could choose whether I wanted to bring those file types in. I could also add filters here, you know, we've got exclude and include filters. Uh, it can work on files or folders, so I can actually drag folders into avail as well, not just files. Uh, you know, well, and just some logic around the, uh, the name of those. So I can use that to uh, filter in additional uh, then down at the bottom here, when we go to creating tags, we can actually add some manual tags here. But down at the bottom, it assumes that the the folder structure that you have used has some meaning. So you know, if I sort of in my browser back here, if I actually let's go to the uh, oops, not templates, libraries, Australia. So if I was to drag and drop that Australia folder to index that everything within the Australia folder and its subfolders, uh, then it would take all of their, their subfolder names and all that sort of stuff and use those uh, 
folder names, etc., as tags, as it brings the content in for us. So I'll just uh, go to the next, and basically it's just going to now go and start indexing all of that data into the cloud. And uh, I can simply refresh on that channel. You see, we get a little bit of a uh, bit of a spinning wheel there to tell us that it's uh, going to index it. it. Takes a little while to uh, just to kick off that initial, uh, but once it's once that initial uh, kick off happens, it's pretty quick to the uh, to the other content. And you can see there it is there, and it's brought in uh, the various tags, uh, etc. Here as well. Uh, we do also have the ability to uh, automatically create keys and um, based on parameters, you know, such as in this case here, the, the Omni class title, as you probably know, is a parameter with inside Revit. Uh, so, so, so is the host is, is kind of an inbuilt parameter. So it can actually uh, take all of those, that information. You also notice it's uh, automatically gra grabbing the Revit category, that the fact that the Revit category for this object is a door. All right, so it's automatically bringing in a lot of uh, tag information for us uh, based on values of parameters in files, etc. We can customize that. I'm not going to go into to that in the demo and show you how to do that, but uh, basically we can, you know, if you've got a set of parameters that uh, that are standard in all your content and you would like to uh, bring those parameters into Avail, uh, you, you can set up a, an automated process to enable that. <clears throat> the, so we've, we've talked a little bit about, uh, we've talked about the desktop, we've talked about the cloud, we've talked about the Revit add-in, we've talked about stream. The final bit I want to talk about is the analytics, and this is really one of the uh, one of the powerful parts to it. So in Avail, we also, because we can index absolutely anything into Avail, uh, we we can also index um, websites into Avail as well. And I've just got a, uh, a dashboard here that I'm going to bring up. So once you, uh, basically when you set things up, everything is getting uh, registered, all your activity is getting registered into uh, Google Analytics, which you can then set up, you know, various different dashboards. Solutions will allow you to uh, grab that data and start slicing it and dicing it. In this case, uh, we're grabbing the, the Data Studio and, it looks like it's uh, actually trying to refresh some data there, Mike. Yep, I must have a bit of a slow internet connection today. But basically, you know, it's going to give us some graphs in here based on that data, you know, around, uh, in this case here, we can see content flags. Uh, we can also see, you know, it's not come up as yet. I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Google Data Studio at the moment, but, uh, but basically it would give us, you know, perhaps here a list of the top searches with zero results. So that's quite an interesting one, right? Because that might mean we need to create some content to uh, fill that those needs, or it might mean that we actually have content, but we haven't named it or tagged it in the way that our users are expecting it to be named or tagged. So we can then go back and, and uh, reassess how we're naming things and tagging things to make it easier for the users to find that content. You know, we can also, there, there's a graph there of, uh, that would come up of popular searches and popular, obviously, once again, that can drive some decisions about how, what uh, type of content we're going to focus on creating and or improving, for example. Uh, so you can see here, you know, there's there's a great amount of um, basically all the data that comes into into uh, Google Analytics is just up to us how we choose to slice and dice that data to get the information out of it that we want. The other things that we could get is, you know, um, who's inserted what content into which projects, uh, things things like that. So you know. Whatever, whatever we sort of uh, want to get out of it is going to be possible pretty much. Uh, in fact, we can even, uh, you know, 
combine things. Uh, so this one's probably not going to work at this stage, but the uh, flags and comments is, uh, uh, no, actually that one should, but flags and comments is obviously the flags and comments that we've done in Avail, but we could also add, you know, just for simplicity, I guess you could add a, uh, a Google Sheets uh, into the data studio that people can uh, fill out via a web form of, you know, content creation requests or whatever that can all just come into here as well, uh, and be could even be combined with content, uh, you know, data from the Avail analytics as well. So using the Avail analytics, we can, you know, we can really start to get some good decisions around what content we need to develop and what content you know we, we may need to fix up and where to focus our attentions so uh, I guess one of the one of the common misconceptions is that you know we need to get our library ready to put into a veil but uh, with the with the analytics side of things you know you're probably better off getting content into a veil and using the analytics to help you make uh, important decisions and uh, targeted decisions about how you can improve your library rather than, uh, I guess, basing it on, on uh, gut feel, which is often reasonably accurate as well. But, uh, you know, you can support that with, with actual data. <clears throat> so thank you for your attention today. Uh, appreciate you taking time out of a busy schedule to have a bit of a look at Avail. If you've got any questions, if you could please just type them in and I'll go ahead and try and answer the questions. Not seeing any questions come in at this stage. I'll just give you another minute or so to, uh, to put any questions in if you have any. <clears throat> All right, it seems we, we don't have any questions, so I'll uh, end the webinar now, and uh, once again, thank you for your attention. <clears throat>